Once again, guys, welcome back to WDYDCSP. What do you do as a central store processor? Guys, I am Jesse Lopez, and as promised, I am continuing this series of how to inspect basic instruments and instruments in general. Stay tuned. Well, all right, guys, as stated in the last video, this video is all about inspecting retractors. Now, as you guys know, there are so many different type of retractors in our industry. Some that you may have never come across and some that you come across all the time. I'm going to go, I'm going to do the ones that we should be seeing on a very daily basis. So in my possession, I have a Army Navy retractor. I have a Graves Speculum Vaginal Retractor. And I have a Matthews Retractor. No, it's not a Sen. It's a Matthews or Matthias Retractor. But it's not about all that. So what are we doing to inspect these instruments? Now, most retractors are made, um, handheld retractors are made of one solid piece of metal. Um, angulated and clawed. Um, to some degree, such as the Army Navy. Um, there's no welding points in it. It's just a solid piece of metal um, with an oval fenestrated area in the middle and two different size retractors on the end. The Matthias uh, Matthews retractor, um, same thing. It's one solid piece of metal, stainless steel, with a flat end retractor and one that is commonly called a cat's claw retractor. This is a blunt one. Um, but then you have retractors or um, speculums of some sort like this vaginal retractor um, or vaginal speculum, whatever you want to call it. Um, it is to retract the walls of the vaginal area, okay? Um, this one is a little bit more complex. There are multiple moving parts. Um, there's screws, um, there's bolts, it comes apart. Um, and one in one of the sections while the other screw has a hard stop on it. Um, um, furthermore, with this retractor, it can come apart even further if you remove the actual head from the working arm. So it does come apart even further. But we'll get into that in a few seconds and probably in a whole separate video because that one's a little bit more complex. But what are we inspecting? Well, if it's not a malleable um, or um, contourable retractor, then you shouldn't see this retractor bent all out of shape. It takes a pretty good deal of force, not so much, but a great deal of force to actually bend this retractor. Um, and if it's bent out of shape, constantly bending and unbending, um, it would have caused a lot of stress and damage to this retractor. So pitting is a very common or um, uh, sharp edges is a very common uh, uh, damage on retractors because a lot of times when they're retracting areas, if they're using any power drills or um, power saws, they do tend to hit the retractor with them and cut into them or drill into them. You'll see that a lot with suctions, um, a lot of neural cases um, and things of that nature. So you want to inspect the instrumentation for any sharp edges, any burrs, discolorization, rust, of course, bio burden. Um, you want to check the actual bends to make sure that there aren't any damages or any cracks um, in the bends itself. Um, overall stability of the instrumentation. Um, but these guys can be in circulation for decades because um, they're very durable um, as long as they're not damaged um, or cracked or scraped. The smaller retractor, the Matthias, anything with a cat claw, of course, this is the working ends. So you want to check those ends for any bio burden. With anything that has um, hooks or uh, any sharp edges on it, you want to inspect in between each one of those. Um, and you want to look at that in an angle. Um, instead of straight on, you want to kind of turn the retractor on an angle and observe in there because there can be some... Um, bio burden or blood dried in between each finger of the claw. Um, same thing, you want to make sure that the claws are even. Um, if the design is anything different, then it should be that. But these claws are made to be 
even, okay? If not one finger of the claw appears somewhere, the other one down there pulled back. Um, again, it takes a great deal to bend this instrument. So if you see something like that, it was um, damaged either in a set or mishandled in some way, shape or form. Um, they don't bend just by you retracting. This is a very strong metal. Same thing with the foot retractor area. You wanna make sure that that's a good, pretty much a right angle um, with a little curve at the end. Make sure there's no sharp edges on there from accidental drilling or cutting into and just overall cleanliness of the instrumentation. No pitting again, rusting, discolorization of any sort. All right, so I have a few minutes to discuss this retractor here. So I did break this retractor down to its very basic comp, um, very basic um, compounds. Um, it's actually one, two, three, four pieces to this retractor. Um, normally you don't see this broken down to such a high degree um, because it can be um, uh, misassembled, uh, uh, assembled incorrectly. But what you'll normally see um, is, and this is okay to see it this way, is let me pop this back in place here, guys, which takes a little bit of force, and that's why it's usually not broken down to such degree. Um, but let's see if I can pop this back into place here without putting too much force behind what I'm doing here. So there's one side, and then here's the other side. What you will see is the retractor come through as so, okay? One half, the other half, and the actual bolt. Now what you want to inspect is of course the, um, the threading on the actual screw on the bottom half of the retractor. You want to make sure that that's firm and not loose. No bio burden. You want to check the track area um, where fluid is designed to go down to make sure that there's no bio burden in there, any debris. Again, no sharp edges. Again, you have to remember where this is getting inserted into. So you don't want no sharp edgings to cut it, do any cutting into it. The same thing, this is a serrated um, and threaded um, screw. You wanna make sure that that screw is threaded correctly and that the nut that is attached on there flows freely back and forth. No debris, no bio burden. Same thing, you wanna observe the inside track for any bio burden, discolorization, any damages. The upper portion of the um, bill or retractor is nice and smooth. Um, as well as the um, instrument uh, wedge line in there. So this is actually designed so that when an instrumentation is used, they give it a little bo bit more area of play to get in there to work with the instrument. You wanna make sure when you assemble the instrumentation that you assemble it correctly, all right? This is the correctly assembled way that this instrument is placed together. The actual top portion of the blade should be shorter than the bottom portion because as this blade is opened up and retracted all the way um, to allow vision and exposure to the area of examination, um, the blades actually um, go down in an angle and wrap around the cervix area to give that a complete visual inspection of the cervical area. Again, no sharp edges, no bio burden, all parts are flowing correctly um, and smoothly. There is no resistance. Um, the bill opens and closes uh, uh, nice and smoothly. If it was taken apart to the basic compounds, there are two notches in there where the actual U-shape, or it can be unishaper, um, un uh, a unicorn. Um, so instead of a why as such it can actually have one half to allow entrance to one side um, but you want to make sure that both notches are in the top blade and everything is working smoothly up and down and um, that is all I have guys for retractors um, join me next time as we do, do inspection and testing of our friends the scissors as always, guys, stay true to yourselves, keep it 100, and peace.